Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and good night, wherever it is you are watching this from. My name is Ellie Upton, I'm one of the Ultimate Performance Coaches, and today I am going to debunk 35 of the biggest myths in the fitness business. Yes, 35. There is an awful lot of people lying to you to make money out of you. So I'm now going to give you that definitive list. You can do with it what you will, but without further ado, let's get down to it. Myth number one. You look good, so you must know what you're talking about. Oh my, 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 this could not be more wrong. Some of the best looking physiques are often the people who have had to overcome the least in order to get there. By that, I mean they've been born with phenomenal genetics and this stuff's been easy for them. Now, of course, it's easy for me to call genetics on this, but the reality is I've seen a lot of the biggest fitness personalities in the business who look amazing, who don't know their ass from their elbow. So please do not buy into the fact that just because somebody looks good, they know what they are doing and they are gonna care about your results. How to pick a trainer, how to pick a mentor, how to pick somebody to teach you is look at their track record. Have they got a track record of results with multiple different types of people and can people vouch for them again and again and again and again? Or are they just flashing their button biceps all over social media? Myth number two, lifting will make me bulky. Unfortunately, it will not. It's not that simple. I've been lifting for 10, 11 years and I'm still not bulky and not for want of trying, trust me. Please, especially you ladies out there, don't fall into the trap of thinking that lifting weights is going to make you bulky. What lifting weights is going to do is make you strong, confident, sexy, better at everything you've ever done and feel better than you've ever felt. Please do not fall into the trap of thinking that weightlifting is going to make you bulky. Of course, you're going to call out various stereotypes, people who are overly athletic. More often than not, this is a combination of crazy genetics, often a little bit of assistance behind closed doors, and a very, very unique way of dieting into that state. They're purposefully trying to get there. Do not fall into the trap of thinking that weightlifting is going to make you bulky. It just isn't that easy. Myth number three, spot reduction. You can choose where you lose fat off your body. Unfortunately, you cannot choose where you lose fat off your body. You either lose fat off your entire body or none at all. The ideal situation would be to say, I only want to lose fat here. Great, awesome, done. Can't be done. However, there is something to say that by keeping your hormones in check, i.e. your stress levels in check, your blood sugar in check, that you can potentially influence not storing fat in certain places, i.e. around your middle. So do make sure you keep everything in balance, you keep your diet in check, you keep your rest and recovery in check, and you don't overtrain. and then potentially you can minimize fat storage in those trouble areas, but can you spot reduce? No, you cannot. Myth number four, DOMS is the sign of a good workout. For those of you who don't know what DOMS is, it's delayed onset muscle soreness. So these are the aches and pains that you feel after a big heavy workout. They are not, contrary to popular belief, a sign of a good workout. They are a painful byproduct of muscle damage. Now, sometimes if it's too severe, it's because you have damaged the muscle too much. Because you can't feel it doesn't mean that you haven't damaged the muscle enough to cause adaptation and to progress. No, it doesn't. Don't use DOMS as a measure of whether your workouts are effective. You are better off making sure you are keeping a track record of your programs and always, always, always ensuring that you're progressing numbers-wise throughout the program. DOMS are not a sign of a good workout. Myth number five. It is as simple as calories in, calories out when it comes to fat loss. Oh, if only it was. Unfortunately, it is not. It's not as simple as calories in, calories out. You need to make sure that the calories you are putting in are nutrient-dense calories. A calorie is not just a calorie. How many times can I say calorie in this one little skip? Not only that, but your hormonal balance plays a massive role. Your recovery plays a massive role. Your genetics play a massive role. Your digestive function plays a massive role. I could go on and on and on and on. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that it is as simple as calories in, calories out. If you do fall into that trap, you're going to end up under-eating and making yourself very, very ill over time. Myth number six, you need to be stretching before a workout. You don't need to be stretching before a workout. What you should be doing before a workout is a general warm-up, getting some blood flowing around your body, getting your tissues warm, then doing a dynamic warm-up, dynamic stretch, i.e. a movement-based stretch, not static as per the kind of stereotype of stretching. You then get into your workout, you're going to have a great workout. At the end of your workout, that is when you then do the typical static stretching that most of you are thinking about. Do not stretch before a workout. It's going to reduce the effectiveness of the workout and potentially put you at a slightly higher risk. Myth number seven. A high-protein diet is bad for you. This one's a funny one. The, the claims usually here are, oh, it's going to give me cancer, it's going to give me liver problems, it's going to give me kidney problems. No, it is not. A high-protein diet will do nothing at all good for you. The reason these stigmas are about is because if you already have problems with these organs, potentially, yes, removing some protein to reduce the stress on them is a good thing. However, 
Eating too much protein is never going to cause these problems. It just isn't. It does not matter how you look at it. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that a high protein diet is a bad idea. It's a damn good idea. It's one of the best ideas you could ever have. Myth number eight, eggs are bad for you, so don't eat too many. Eggs are not bad for you. Now, some of you may or may not remember about probably two years ago from now, I'm filming this in 2018, the government finally bowed down and admitted that they had been wrong for about 40 years on eggs. The claim was that they elevated cholesterol, which it caused an increase in heart disease. The opposite is true. Eggs elevate good cholesterol, therefore pushing down bad cholesterol and actually reducing the risk of heart disease. Not only that, but they are incredibly nutrient dense, full of good fats, full of good protein. Eggs are not bad for you. Let's shake that one off. It's an outdated idea. Done. Enjoy your eggs. Myth number nine, squats build a nice big round booty. No, they do not. Squats do not build a booty at all. In fact, they almost completely bypass the glutes for most people. They are going to be a more quad dominant movement and especially with the movement dysfunctions that most of you out there watching this have, even more so you're going to miss the glutes. If you want to hit your glutes, you want to build a big round booty, then take the squats out and add in hip thrusts, deadlifts, stiff leg deadlifts, single leg deadlifts, rear foot elevated split squats. Those would be the big ones to hit your glutes. Forget about squats if you're trying to build up your glutes, they're going to be a far more quad dominant movement. Myth number 10, doing my sprints on a treadmill is just as effective as doing them outside. No, it is not. A treadmill moves for you. When you are outside doing your hill sprints or your high intensity interval training, you are having to provide forward force. Therefore, you're going to output far more energy. Yes, of course, it's a good alternative running on a treadmill because potentially it's low impact, etc. But if you have a choice between the two, go on a nice steep grass hill or a treadmill, go on a steep grass hill. You're going to work harder. Myth number 11, I haven't got that many fingers, so I'm going to have to stop that. Um, Running is better for you than walking when it comes to your cardio. No, it is not. Walking quickly is better for you than running. Why? First off, potentially you're going to take your heart rate too high and miss the optimal fat burning zone when you are running. Not only that, but the risk versus reward is far, far greater. You're looking at uh, a higher risk of damage to your feet, to your ankles, to your knees, to your hips, to your back. So either way, it doesn't matter how you look at it, walking is going to do better for you. It's potentially going to burn more fat. You're going to put yourself at far less risk. And remember, that kind of steady state cardio, low intensity cardio, should be used as a recovery element and a circulation element as much as it should be as calorie burning. So you do not want to be exerting yourself too high. Myth number 12, training abs will give you a six pack. No, it will not give you a six pack. If you want a six pack, you are going to have to diet like you want a six pack. You're gonna to have to get that in check. You're gonna make sure that your dieting is correct, your cardio is correct, the rest of your training and recovery is correct. Once you can see your abs, for most men, that's gonna be around 10%, maybe a bit lower. For most females, let's say 12 to 14%, that's when you can really start training them, when you can see them and you can body build, per se. Until then, no amount of ab exercises is going to give you a six pack if you are fat. That simple. Myth number 13, you need to train every single day in order to get in shape. No, you absolutely do not. I would actually suggest for most of you out there watching this, that would be far from optimal and actually be detrimental to you. You're not recovering well enough. Most of you aren't dieting well enough. Most of you aren't sleeping well enough and you are unable to control your stress well enough to be able to train every day. It is likely going to be digging a bigger hole than you can recover from, so don't do it. I would suggest for most of you out there, recreational exercises, looking anywhere between three and five days a week should be more than enough. Myth number 14, I'm sweating when I train so I must be working hard enough. Nope, you're sweating because you're warm. Myth number 15, kind of goes back to the last one. I'm sweating so I must be losing fat. No, 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 no. If it was that easy, we'd all just move to a hot country and get shredded or walk and sit in a sauna for an hour a day and get absolutely shredded. Unfortunately, just because you are warm and you are sweating does not mean you are losing fat. What does this also mean? Stop buying into these silly sweatsuits and various contraptions that people try and sell to you on the internet. They are not going to work. If you want to get lean, you're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to get adequate amount of workouts done, adequate amount of cardio done and the right diet. No amount of sweating is going to help you get lean. Myth number 16, squatting past parallel is bad for your knees. No, it is not. Being a pussy is bad for your knees. A lot of you fitness boys and girls out there are guilty of this. Is You will use this as an excuse to just not go to full range because you're not as strong at full range. Drop your ego, drop into full depth. It's actually better for your knees, better for your hips, better for your overall kinetic chain. You are going to create massive muscle imbalances by squatting above parallel just because you want people to think you can lift an awful lot more. Sorry, but it's true.
Myth number 17, cardio is the most effective way to lose fat. No, it is not. Weight training is the most effective way to lose fat. Why? Because the more muscle you have, the more metabolically active tissue you have, the more fat you are burning at rest. Cardio is great, it is useful, it can be very, very handy for burning extra calories, increasing blood flow and recovery, but it is not the optimal way to lose fat. If you want to lose fat and stay lean long-term, weight train. Myth number 18, simply eat less in order to lose fat. This is not the case. In fact, I would suggest potentially you need to eat more. Eat more nutrient-dense foods. Eat more good meats, good vegetables, good fruits, etc. Less refined sugars, less saturated fats, less produced foods. Eat less of the bad stuff, more of the good stuff, and you will find that you probably get lean pretty quickly and you stay there. Myth number 19, and this will be one that strike home with a lot of you. Carbs make you fat. Carbs do not make you fat. Carbs can be used as your friend. The slight thing that you need to take into account there is that carbs can be your friend if you are lean, if you're already lean. If you are fat, then potentially carbs could make you a little bit fatter if you're not using them correctly. So bear that in mind. Don't be afraid of carbs. They are your friend. You just need to know how to use them and when to use them. Myth number 20. We're getting through it. No carbs after 4 p.m. because you'll get fat. What an utterly ridiculous, ridiculous way of thinking. Carbs are not going to make you fat by eating them after 4 p.m. If anything, you should be eating all of your carbs after 4 p.m. because they're going to help you sleep better, they're going to help you recover better, and they are certainly not going to make you fat. Try to shake that one off. Carbs after 4 p.m., myth. Myth number 21. The commercial, media-driven, calorie-counting, points-counting, shake diets, juice diets, this diet, that diet work. They do not. If you want to get in shape and you want to stay in shape long term, it is as simple as a good, clean, healthy diet with plenty of food and adequate training. Please do not fall in for these mass marketing cons is the only way they can be described. Some of you out there are going to be saying, oh yeah, but it's a good start. It will get help kickstart my fat loss. No, it will not. What it will do is help kickstart your path to a very, very unhappy, physically unhealthy and mentally unhealthy life. Any of these shake diets, soup diets, Count your points diets, count your calories diets that are out there. Please, please, I beg of you, shake them off. They are all lies. Myth number 22, light weights and high reps for toning. No, if you want to tone, toning essentially is getting leaner and building muscle, okay? It doesn't really matter what you want to do with regards to your training. You should be lifting as heavy as you can in moderate rep ranges. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's say if we were taking a continuum of both males and females, anywhere between eight reps and 15 reps for both sexes, and as heavy as you can lift for those sets. Do not fall into the trap of thinking that getting a three kilo dumbbell and doing 700 bicep curls with it four times a week is going to get you in shape. It just isn't. Don't waste your time. You'll be spinning your wheels. Light weights and high reps for toning, myth. Lift heavy. Myth number 23, more is better. More is not necessarily better. What do I mean by that? An awful lot of you out there overtrain dramatically in relevance to your recovery factors, i.e. how much you're sleeping, how well you are doing on your diet, how compliant you are being on your diet, how fast you are recovering, and your genetics. Going into the gym for three hours a night does not necessarily mean you are going to get better results than going into the gym three hours a week. It is about balancing your training intensity training volume, nutrition, and recovery. Don't fall into the trap of thinking the more you do, the better results you're going to get. Myth number 24, it doesn't matter if I replace a meal with a shake. By that, when I say a meal, I mean a whole food meal, something you've got to chew with a liquid meal. Yes, it does matter. They are not even, let's say, for argument's sake, that even if they had exactly the same calorie content, the exact same protein, carbon, fat content, and the exact same nutrient makeup, Blending a meal versus eating a meal are very, very different. Why? Because your body has to work to break down the solid meal, which is a good thing. When your body has to work at anything, it is burning more calories. By eating more whole food, you are going to be burning more calories when you're sitting on your ass. Does that make sense? Please, please, please don't fall into the habit of thinking that having a quick shake is a good enough replacement for a meal. It's not. Myth number 25. High intensity interval training is the best form of fat loss. It's a great form of fat loss, but it is not the best. I will tell you why. Number one, weight training is gonna give you just as good a workout hour for hour as high intensity interval training ever will. Secondly, you're gonna build more muscle in the long term, so metabolically, you're gonna be in a better place to burn fat in the long term. Thirdly, 
you can program in a far greater element of structural balance into a weight training program, so you are going to have a less risk of injury due to muscular imbalance. Thirdly, it's not as high impact. High intensity interval training is incredibly high impact. It's been popularized recently by you know some geezers and some fitness personalities around the world who are saying high intensity interval training is the way forward. Yes, it's effective, but should it be used how they are using it? No, it should not. Why? Because it's too high impact. I put it to most of you out there watching this, you're probably nodding your head now because you've got joint issues, you've got ankle issues, back issues, knee issues, neck issues, wrist issues from doing these workouts. There is a reason for that. Is it an effective form of fat loss? Yes, it is. Is it the best form of fat loss? No, it is not. Weight training should always, always, always be your number one priority. Myth number 26, I deserve a cheat day. No, you probably don't. Why? Because most of you probably aren't training hard enough. You're not dieting hard enough. You're not being compliant enough on your training and your nutrition to deserve a cheap meal, never mind a cheat day. You are not lean enough already. Cheat days, cheat meals can be used if you are already lean. However, if you're carrying a lot of body fat or even moderate amounts of body fat, they can still be detrimental no matter how much you may want them. That's assuming you train. Now, I see on a daily basis people going through pizzas, ice cream, chocolates, blah, 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 on a Saturday or Sunday, and they say, oh, it's cheat day. I can't help but sit there and look at them and think, so you train, do you? Oh, no, no, no. So you've been dieting all week, have you? Uh, well, not really, but I just don't usually eat this much junk. Exactly. You don't deserve a cheat day. At best, if you are already very, very lean, you can say honestly to yourself that you've trained hard enough, you've done all your cardio, you haven't missed your sessions, your intensity was high, you've been compliant, then maybe you have a cheat meal. You don't have a cheat day. Myth number 27. I can still drink alcohol and get in great shape. No, you cannot. If you want to get to transformation, stop drinking alcohol. It's not that damn hard. Grow up a little bit. You don't need to be going out every single week. You don't need to be having a glass of wine every night because you're stripped out from work. Don't be such a snowflake. Take alcohol out until you have got your transformation sorted, got it done. Then fine, go out every couple of weeks with your friends. Chances are when you're lean, when you're looking great, when you're feeling great, you will understand the implications of alcohol and what that does to your body. You will then not want to drink quite so much of it. Myth number 28, cardio is the devil. Cardio is not the devil. Cardio is great. Cardio is useful. It's very, very good for your body. Now, if you are doing too much cardio, the myth is that you are going to lose a load of muscle. If you are only doing cardio, yes, you are probably going to lose an awful lot of muscle. However, if you are integrating low intensity cardio sessions into your weight training program, the weight training is creating a demand for you to build muscle. The cardio sessions are helping blood flow, nutrient delivery, and generally burning calories help to keep you lean. Cardio is not the devil. It just has to be used correctly. Myth number 29. High fat diets make you fat. No, they don't. High fat diets do not make you fat. The wrong balance of fats in your body can create ill health and potentially can make you fat. However, high fat diets, good clean fats, and plenty of them in your diet is going to do nothing but good for you. It's going to keep you lean, keep you extremely healthy, keep you full of energy, keep your skin, hair, nails, tissues, and cells running as best they can. So is a high fat diet unhealthy? No, it is not. Myth busted. Myth number 30, full fat versus low fat. Now, of course, over the years, over the last few decades, low fat became very, very trendy for various reasons. The... the um, Ill information that was posted out all over the media, television, magazines, etc. over the last couple of decades saying that high fat was bad for you. That was the first thing to spare it. Secondly, take the fat away, you're going to take some calories away. However, when you take something out of a product, you have to put something back in. And in this case, in these processed foods, it is a horrible amount of chemicals and xenoestrogens that are going to be increasing your risk of cancer. They're going to be increasing your risk of heart disease and chronic diseases, estrogenic toxicity and general symptoms thereof. So if you have a choice between full fat or low fat, always, always, always go for very, very good quality organic full fat products. Myth number 31. I'm gluten and dairy intolerant, ain't I? No, you're probably not. Stop jumping on every bandwagon that hits the media. Honestly, people, if you are dairy intolerant, fine. Get it tested, get it confirmed, take it out. If you are not, then keep dairy in. Just make sure you're getting it from good sources. If you are gluten intolerant, then fine. Take it out, get it tested. If not, stop it. Honestly. Myth number 32. It's impossible to overeat unhealthy foods. <laughs> Our survey says no. Trust me, I know this. It's very, very easy to overeat unhealthy foods. You can still do it. Peanut butter, avocados, nuts, steak, red meat, white meat, salmon, fish, whatever. You can still overeat, irrelevant of what you're eating. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that you cannot overeat unhealthy food. It can still make you fat if you eat too much of it. 
Number 33, adding protein to something suddenly makes it healthy. If only. Just because you have a chocolate bar and you add protein to it does not mean you've suddenly made that chocolate bar more healthy and dietary compliant. All you have done is add more calories and protein to it. Weird that. The same applies to cakes, brownies, flapjacks, shakes, cereal. You name it. Just by adding a scoop of protein into something does not mean that it has suddenly become healthy and is going to get you ripped. All you have done is added more protein. Myth number 33. Superfoods. Superfoods are not that super. Simple as that. They are a huge marketing ploy. Yes, of course, there are the odd one or two that do have a really, really high nutrient content. However, should you be paying three times the price for something just because it has superfoods written across the label? No, you shouldn't. Stop falling for it. Myth number 34. Squatting and deadlifting is bad for your back. No, not squatting and deadlifting is bad for your back or squatting and deadlifting badly and being ruled by your ego is bad for your back. Squatting and deadlifting can be some of the most effective exercises and variations therein to rehabilitate your back. If your body is strong as a unit throughout squatting and deadlift and big movements like that, you are not going to be injured. Simple as that. If you have a bad back and you've been avoiding squatting and deadlifting, that's probably not a coincidence. Myth number 35, last but not least. This is gonna be quite an important one for a lot of you, so grab a pen and paper, make sure you write it down. If you leave your weights out on a gym floor, the little gym floor fairies will come and clean it up. No, they will not. Gym floor fairies, like unicorns, do not exist. Clean up your own weights, please, no matter whether you're in your gym, somebody else's gym. It's unsafe, it's disrespectful, and it makes everybody think that you're a douche. Well, there you have it, guys and girls. That is my top 35 fitness myths busted. I hope you took something from this. If you did, make sure you comment below, like it, share it, make sure everybody sees it so we can blow through the smoke and mirrors in the fitness industry. Until the next time, I have been Elliot Upton. I will see you soon. P.S. No amount of electro pads on your stomach is going to give you a six-pack either. Stop buying them.